Welcome folks. I'm really excited to tell you about my new watercolor palette that's available to you now. Let me tell you a little bit about it and then I'm going to show you how I lay out my paints in the palette. My watercolor palette I developed over a number of years. I asked an awful lot of artists how they would like to see a watercolor palette de developed and what was wrong with current palettes. So what I did from this, these interviews was that I determined that one of the things I wanted to have available for you was a really sturdy uh, palette. So I've had my palette made of really sturdy plastic. This is a palette that you'll use the rest of your life. You don't have to replace it. You don't have to worry about it warping or cracking. That was one of my pet peeves. I wanted to make sure that we had a great palette for you. It also comes with a lid so that you can place the lid on top and that will help keep your paints more moist. Let me tell you a little bit more about the features of this particular palette. Another feature is that the artist that I talked to wanted a larger mixing area. So this particular palette has the largest mixing area of all palettes now. In addition to that, we made the wells a full half inch deep rather than three eighths inch deep. This way the paints that are mixed in the mixing area are not going to splash up into your wells and contaminate your pure paint and vice versa. So those wells are very helpful for you now being that deep. In addition to that, we also made the wells bigger. I made the wells a full one and three quarter inches instead of one and a half inches square and that way you have more room to use your large brushes. So that was important. In addition to that, I've also included two larger wells for you that can be used for your two favorite colors or you can use those to mix color for washes or for glazes. Your choice. Now, Another feature is that I made the palette so that it was level throughout. Many palettes have a certain height on the outside, but on the inside they're actually lower. By making the palette even all the way around as far as being level, when you place your lid on, you have less problems with paint spilling back and forth between the wells. So let me take a moment now and show you how I would fill these particular wells. I'm going to start with my burnt sienna. So I'm going to place some burnt sienna in my particular palette right here. And I'm going to mix out a large quantity. I always tell my students, make sure that you put a lot of paint out in your palette. I made these wells extra large for a reason. I want you to be able to use lots of paint. Now, next I'll move to my yellow ochre. I'll place in some yellow ochre in the palette. Next to that, I'll place in my permanent green. I'm going to explain to you why I do this in this particular order in just a moment. Next, I'll put in my hooker green deep. So I'm going to place the hooker green deep in the palette. Now, what I'm doing is I'm placing out colors based on my particular need to grab a certain color for certain reasons. I call these colors my earth colors. It's the color of the earth and the trees and the foliage. So I have my burnt sienna, yellow ochre, permanent green, and hooker green on this side. The next color I'm going to put out is a yellow. I'm going to put out my permanent yellow lemon. So let me place out some of that yellow now. In addition to that, I'm going to place my reds. I'm going to go with a permanent red light. This is sort of, a, sort of like a cad red. It's an orangey red. So I'll put out an abundant amount of that color. In addition to that, I also want a little darker red. I'm going to go with a permanent red deep. So I'm going to place out more of that particular red. That particular red is just a good old solid red that can be mixed either with yellows or blues. Next, I'm going to put out a color called quinacridone rose. That's sort of in the family of a permanent magenta uh, not quite as dark as an alizarin crimson. It's sort of on the pinkish side. Next, I'll go to my ultramarine blue deep. And I'll put an abundant amount of that. Now you'll notice that I have on this side my hooker green deep and on this side my ultramarine blue deep. I have those in my largest wells. Why did I do that? I did that for the simple reason that those are the two colors that I use the most. As a landscape painter, there's a lot of greens and blues in the landscape, and I like to have those colors. 
In addition to that, I can make a lot of my grays with those colors. So I'm using a lot of hooker green deep and a lot of ultramarine blue deep. That's why I keep those in my larger wells. My next color that I'm going to go to is my Prussian blue. So I'm going to place my Prussian blue next to my ultramarine blue deep. Now this is a very dark blue, and I need that to make my uh, extreme darks if I wish to. I can mix those with my uh, uh, quinacridone rose if I wish. I can mix it with my hooker green deep if I wish, and I can get nice rich darks. So I want that dark Prussian blue out as well. My next color is cobalt blue. This is a standard color in most watercolor palettes as well. So that color is going to come out, and I use that a lot when I'm doing skies. I'll also mix it with my greens for different colors in my foliage, so I have that available. My next color is another popular color. It's cerulean blue, and I like to use cerulean blue also with greens, but many times I'll use it if I want to keep my area cool, such as in the distance of my paintings, or I may even take and throw some uh, cerulean blue in with my darks. It adds a wonderful little contrast to the colors in the dark areas. In addition to that, my final color that I put out is a turquoise blue. In my turquoise blue, I like to use a sort of a shadow color. It makes a wonderful shadow on the ground or on the edges of trees and so forth, and you can have a lot of fun with that color. Another benefit of using a dark color such as a turquoise blue is I can mix it with my quinacridone rose and I can get some extreme darks that way as well. But this is the general layout of my palette. Now you'll notice that there's still some spaces available for your favorite colors. So think about the colors that you can come up with for your palette. But that's the reason I do that. So you'll notice again, I have my earth colors on this side, I have my warm colors on this side, and then I have my cooler colors on what is my right. That's my choice of colors. I hope you have a lot of fun painting. I hope that you'll explore my new palette and enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I spent a lot of time on the design of this thing, on this particular painting, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.